Carlos Alatorre is a serial entrepreneur. He is the founder of ABS Payroll, and now he's expanding his brand to offer outsourcing administration for small businesses and insurance coverage as well. Payroll services fees, the fees, you have to pay them weekly or biweekly. And I needed money. I, I was like, hey, you know, I need money every week, you know, every Friday. We started offering payroll services to some of our clients, some of our existing clients. And I decided to make ABS Payroll Solution its own business. For Carlos, to start any company with the right administrative foundation is the only way to success. Let's talk to Carlos and find out cómo lo hizo. Éxito. Success. Hábitos. Habits. ¿Cómo lo hizo? How do they make it? Descubra las costumbres y secretos de los triunfadores. Discover the habits and the secrets of those who have succeeded. Carlos, thank you for being with us today in Como Lo Hizo. Thank you for inviting me, Fernando. So tell me about you. I mean, we were talking before uh, this conversation, and you were telling me that you had to go bankruptcy. Tell me about it. What happened? Ah, well, it all started uh, back. So we immigrated from Mexico. We left our family down there, and my grandpa passed away while we were here, and he left some money to my mom. And it was in 2006, around that time, where um, she got the money, and the option was either to buy a house or uh, do something with the money to produce more money. Um, I advised my family, funny enough, I was only 20, I'm uh, second to the youngest, and I said, hey, why are we going to buy a house if we can't afford a payment? You know, let's take the money and buy a business that can produce more money. Um, at the time, I thought that was the best advice. I gathered my whole family in the living room. I, I even did a, a, a whiteboard and I said, look, we can start a corporation. We can, you know, at that time, I used to work in a Hallmark store, uh, one of my brothers as well. And I knew the books. I knew the accounting. I knew how much it was making. Um, I remember at the time it was doing about $80,000 in net profit, which in 2006 was pretty good. And I, you know, the owner was going to retire. He was going to move to Idaho. And he said, I, you know, I told my family, hey, why don't we just buy the store? We can make 80000 a year and we can pay for the house, you know, instead of just putting it all into a house and we can't even afford the payment. Um, sure enough, you know, I, my mom had a, a lot of trust in me and she said, let's do it. Um, things were great for three years. You know, uh, it was from 2006 to about end of 2009. Um, business was good. You know, we were putting in a lot of changes. Uh, family would come in, would clean up the store, restock it. We put in some money, more merchandise, revive the store. Things were going well until September 2008. Um, we were doing about a hundred thousand dollars in revenue per month at that time. Um, things were going well until 2008, September. I mean, it just came crushing down. Uh, we did around $8,000 in sales for the whole month. Just my payroll was $17,000. The wow. rent for the location was about $12,000. Um, so yeah, it was a reality check. And, you know, at that time I was 21 22, 21. And, you know, I was going to college at the same time and it was, it was stressful. And, uh, sorry, mom, but I lost your money. <laughs> you know, I did lose her money. Um, but, uh, you know, it was a learning experience that I took and it, it helped me to where I am today. So, so what happened? So we ended up uh, closing, you know, did a blowout sale. Uh, we got pennies on the dollar for everything. Um, we, uh, you know, we did talk to the landlord to help us with the rent. It was too high. They didn't want to budge. Um, we ended up just selling everything and closing the, the store. So, but what what was the reason? Was the recession of the time or, you know, there was a change in the market? It, it was probably the recession. It was, um, it, we got hit pretty big. It was an item that you didn't need, you know, Hallmark cards, um, gifts, um, 
you know, stationery we used to sell and so forth. And it was one of those things where we were the first ones that people stopped, you know, buying for. Uh, and we saw that drastically in September uh, when people started losing their homes, you know, we, people stopped shopping for items like the ones we sold. And it ended up being that um, we just couldn't afford it. I was, we were literally every month from September 2008 till May of 2009 that we closed we any profit that we had or any product that we have we lost it all trying to keep it alive so what happened with the money that uh, your mother got and we we invested it all in the store um we bought it here's a funny thing a lot of people don't know we didn't just buy it traditionally where the guy said hey give me this amount and you know you get the store the guy was in debt as well and he was about hundred and ten thousand dollars in debt that he owed to vendors So we made an agreement. He said, just walk in. You keep the store. We already worked there. So I already knew the operations and how everything worked. He said, you walk in, continue paying the vendors, and the store's yours. And I said, really? Like everything? Yeah, the store's yours. Okay. So we did the legal process. I started a corporation for my mother. Um, we bought the store. And um, we, we used her money to pay some of the vendors. And whatever cash flow was coming in, we You know, we made some changes, try to make our margins a little higher so that we can pay down that debt as well as, uh, you know, keep it operational and we can make a, a salary. Um, so basically the money, don't get me wrong, we made very good income through those three years. Right. Um, one of my, the issues, me being so young and naive, um, I spend it. <laughs> as it was coming in, we were spending it. Um, I remember 2017 Christmas was the greatest Christmas we ever had. Um, I got to take it back a little bit. We come from, we immigrated to the U.S. when I was eight years old. We didn't have anything. You know, we sold tamales from a car. Uh, we sold raspados. And, um, to on the me, street? You were a street yeah, vendor? Yeah, the street. Well, not necessarily. We would go. My where, mom would, where in Mexico, excuse me? Uh, uh, sorry, we sold it here. Oh, here. But yeah, I, I come from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. Okay. Oh, so you came here and I you came started here selling. And, and yeah, and so we started selling tamales and, you know, different items just to stay alive. And so money, we didn't have money. So what happened when we got money, I, you know, I spent it. You and, went crazy. And it was, yeah, we went, I mean, the way I saw it, I didn't really lose her money. I just basically... We spend it in three years. We use it. We, yeah. <laughs> <You> so <use> <laughs> um, we had great incomes every year. It was just we were living a lifestyle that we've never had, which was um, even though it was still modest, it was, you know, we bought flat screen TVs when they were $3,000 a piece. Wow. You know, we bought a car and we bought all these gifts and items that at that time starting a business, not the greatest idea. Where well, um, was your best or more, most important lesson out of that experience? I learned what not to do in a business. Every single step. Which is? Um, you know, being undercapitalized, um, not having a business plan. Uh, the biggest, one of the biggest issues and now with what I do is having a budget, you know, and sticking to a budget. Um, it's so crucial to have uh, your ducks in a row so that you can, you know, step by step uh, be able to achieve profitability and, and continue that profitability. I didn't have any of that. I was very like, I, I said, I knew I wanted to be a business owner. I, I, I knew I wanted to own different businesses and, and I went and I rushed into that, you know, thinking, Hey, well, we got a little bit of money, which was not a lot. She only, I think after she paid all her bills or debts that she had, um, she loaned me about $70,000. Um, but the money was just, you know, we blew through that money. Um, and but you blew it. Without organization, so the, you, you, your lack of organization is lack of probably was the and most. ignorance. Like uh, you know, I didn't know what payroll was, and now I'm an expert. But I didn't know what payroll was. I didn't know that you had to be registered with all these agencies, and you know, we got tax sales tax. I mean, one of I call the big four monsters. You know, the IRS, Franchise Tax Board, um, uh, Board of Equalization, and EDD were one of those things that I didn't know anything about. I didn't know about taxes. And, and those things came to me. I, when I found out, it was too late. I couldn't get organized and I couldn't, you know, I, I had dug a, a hole too uh, deep in order to get out of it. So, so, so based on that experience, what would be your best advice to new entrepreneurs or people that want to launch a business? I think everybody needs a reality check. Uh, I've spoken to a lot of people 
that are excited about opening a business and they have great ideas. And I don't think they ever stop and think, well, if my idea is so great, why, you know, why is not every, everybody's not doing it? So there's got to be something that's not so great about it. And people need to step back and say, okay, let me think about this. And, and that's what I would do. And anybody out there that's trying to open a business, you need to step back, do your homework, you know, and uh, talk to experts. And I never did any of that. And that was one of the things I was just so excited that I was able to, you know, take over the store um, that I didn't do any of the homework. And I just went to it and I learned along the ways, but it was just too late. Once I, I, I realized I was like, you know, I could have done this differently and so forth. The recession didn't help, obviously, but it was just my lack of knowledge that put me there. So what happened after you closed Closed doors. Closed the store. Um, we did have a little bit of money. Um, we opened uh, Alator Motorsports. It was my brother had opened one in Pomona. It was it's an auto parts store, and you know, I was uh, I stopped going to college at the time, and I said, "What am I going to do? What's next?" You know, I I think I took about a month off, and he said, "Well, why don't you open a store? You know, like mine. I'm doing good. You open it in Fullerton, California." And I said. You know, let's let's try it. I opened it. But did you do your homework this time? This time I did my homework. Okay. Um, things were great. I actually, uh, we were profitable the first month. Um, I did my, my homework. I think one of the other things that a lot of business owners don't see is that um, you need to make projections and your sales, your cost, and so forth. And this time around I did. I knew how much my rent was going to be, how much payroll was going to be, what taxes I had to pay. Uh, what agencies I had to register with. And those are, are fundamental concepts of a business owner. Um, and so I did. Um, later on, I knew it was not for me. It was, it was not what I, you know, uh, I want to do accounting. I want to do tax preparation. So I started, uh, I told my brother, hey, why don't you take over? You know, this is not going to be for me. So I went to go work for Baines and Associates, uh, tax preparation, accounting firm, so forth. And I worked there for a little bit until I said, you know what, I'm going to open my own and I'm going to, I'm going to start my own firm uh, with the help of my sister, Adriana La Torre. She, she helped me out and we together opened this office. Um, we started in 2010 and tax season was great, but it was not income year round. And it's a seasonal business. Yeah, it's a yeah. seasonal business. And, um, my passion was still business in general. I like to, you know, my ideal um, a career was to open a lot of businesses and, you know, uh, be the CEO of different companies and so forth. Um, when I noticed that I needed more money, that CCNO was not going to pay the bills, I started uh, ABS Payroll Solutions. Um, we started offering payroll services to uh, some of our clients, some of our existing clients. And I decided to make ABS Payroll Solution its own business. I separated it from Alatory Tax and Accounting Firm, which that, was the, that still is the name of my sister's tax business. I separated it and I started ABS Payroll Solutions on, on its own. Why payroll? I mean, that's so dry. It's I mean, so to dry. Me. I, I'm good with numbers. And at the time, I remember that you know, payroll services fees, the fees, you have to pay them weekly or biweekly. And I needed money. I, I was like, hey, you know, I need money every week, you know, every Friday. And at the time, it was just I had a contact that had already a payroll company. He said, hey, yeah, we'll help you out. He guided me and, and you know, did my due diligence with the company, how I was going to establish it. Um, all the little things that I didn't think of before now came into play. And in 2013, I, I, you know, started an LLC and, and started ABS Payroll Solutions. So interesting. Now, let's uh, focus on what do you need in order to open a business? What would be your, your advice to people that want to launch a business? What would the first, the second, third thing to do? Um, so first off, I'd say, you know, you have to come up with a, a budget, uh, a startup cost budget. Uh, I think it's essential um, I've spoken to a lot of people that say, Hey, you know, I want to start a taqueria or, Hey, you know, I want to open a tire shop and so forth. And 
they always are undercapitalized. They think that just because the, you know, the taqueria that's for sale is 30,000, they only need $30,000. Um, first step, you 